Good evening, South Africa. Welcome to Mzansi Chipinias. I'm Tarabo, your host. And tonight we'll be having a discussion on the ups and downs of living as a dark or light skinned woman in South Africa. Uh, our first host has joined us. Yes, Hello, I am. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes, welcome. Then, How are you today? Hi, I'm great. And you? I'm well, thank you. Um, hi, this technology can give do things. Nunki, a few minutes. I think maybe she's she should be joining soon. Oh, okay, because this technology has been making me do things. Yes, I'm pressing, I'm doing things. <laughs> I so think no. <laughs> Can you know? I'm pressing the things that make the things to be done. I'm not seeing. <laughs> Can you <get> bored? <laughs> oh wow! This own YouTube. Hey, we hey, have so Corona. Hey, when the Corona is teaching us things, hey. <laughs> After this, I'm studying IT. I'm dropping politics. I'm going to IT now. Okay, Nungi says she's requested, but I'm not seeing her request. Where do I find? Scroll down. Okay. Oh gosh. Hold on. Just give me a minute. Mm -mm, this is not working. <laughs> I can't find. Sorry, guys. You can just give me a minute or two. Okay, we'll try again. Uh, Nunki, can you please try again? It just says you're waiting to approve, but I'm not picking up the request yet. Thank you, everyone, for being patient with us. Technology today is just... Yeah, we are waking, guys. Okay, Nunki says she's just sent it. Let's see if it's coming through. Hello, pretty. How are you, pretty? People are greeting at us. Yo, you greeting. Hello. Mm, it's not. Oh, I'm getting here. Pressing it. Okay, What's good? What's good? Hi, everyone. Sorry, we're just having a bit of technical issues. We're trying to get connection with Nungi so we can start. Oh, I'm yes, good, pretty. Everyone. Hey, Ginger. So, yes, I'm getting everybody so long. Oh, hi. Everybody's oh. Hello. So I just found out that apparently you can only have one person at a time. What? Yeah. So, Nungi, unfortunately, can you, you'll have to wait until, I think we'll do like a switch in between. I don't know how that'll work. We'll see what, what we can do. Um, so in the meantime, Tiamo, introduce yourself, please. Oh, wow. Okay. I am Tiamo Molotani, but I go with Tiamo Wilson. I am a student at Northwest University Pochostum campus, and I'm studying public administration and public governance with politics. Um, just, yeah, it's a long thing, ne? Yeah. <laughs> we just say politics. We just say politics, you know? Yeah. Uh, I'm 19. I'm 19 turning 20. I have my own organization called She Spoke Organization that brings awareness to gender-based violence. Uh, against women and children, it's quite new, but I think it's 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 going. Yeah. So tell us why you started this organization. Let's just get a bit of more background as to why she spoke and why the name she spoke. Okay, I'm not gonna throw shade, <laughs> but <laughs> my past um my past partner 
she came up with the name she spoke before we had a fallout. Okay. So she spoke, it's kind of like a woman coming out. She's breaking her silence. So that's okay. what we want to do because last year I broke my silence when I came out that I got raped and I found myself in a domestic violence relationship. Okay. So that's how she spoke came about. So what I do, I want to educate people about this issue that is going on in our country from experience, not just from research or textbook or those type of things from actual experience and also help other exactly and help other women as well to speak out about all of this that's happening. And it actually came out in a very I wouldn't say good time but tragic time where we got Bo Nene and Jesse Hess and all of uh the women who succumbed to this tragic uh, traumatic experience yeah so it started with just an idea then it went from having an idea to actually forming an organization it's pretty slow but it's doing well and i hope it goes further well we hope it goes further as well we hope more women more females even males come out and speak just as you have so firstly we actually thank you for the courage for being so brave and actually breaking yeah. and leaving. We know it's not easy. So thank you for that. Really thank you. Easy. But now let's get back to our topic for tonight. Living, I would assume you would classify yourself as a light-skinned woman. Yeah. I've never <laughs> seen myself. Age. Yeah, see, light skin is a, is a different... It's, it's such a huge thing to be called. Because I never saw myself as a light-skinned girl i saw myself as a black girl but okay. as i grew up it was like okay there's light skin and there's dark skin and my dad's side of the family is dark and my mom's side of the family is light and i never i never thought about colorism being such a huge um issue in okay. our country because i've never been through an experience where I was, I think, judged until Nunki came with the idea of colorism for us to talk about it. And then I sat down and I was like, Yazi, I never experienced such. I really never experienced such. And then on Friday, I don't know if it was God or what, we watched Blackish, the series Blackish. And they talk about colorism. <laughs> and I was like, yo, this is like, this is something that was supposed to happen. And then I saw how they spoke about a part of their family being dark and uh, the mother being light-skinned. And I thought about it and I'm like, when we watch TV and we see a movie or a show about slavery, you will never see a light-skinned black person. Yes. If if you have seen it, then please tell me because I've never seen a light-skinned <laughs> black person being yes. a slave. But if you talk about a modern black family, they light skin. Yes. You get it. With so that it's curly like hair. with that curly hair and the yellow bone, and there's this new series that started on Netflix, and everybody's just light skin, but they talk about it's a black show. Yes. So for me, it's like, oh, now I get it. How it affects dark-skinned people because when I look at dark-skinned people, I wish I was there. I really wish I was dark-skinned people because for me, someone who is dark-skinned, they, they, they have like a symbol of bravery, a symbol of strength. I see dark-skinned people as true Africans. I've never saw myself as a true African because I was light-skinned. That's how I started like thinking about my past, my present, and everything else. I was like, but I really never thought of myself as a true black person. You understand? Because when people look at me, they're like, oh, Tamo, are you colored? Oh, Tamo, are you mixed race? And I'm like, ah, but don't give us to now. What do you mean, give a What do you mean, give mixed race? Give us to So you were judged based on your complexion without, so you didn't get the typical 
you are dark and everyone is hating against you. You got, well, you, not what you got, got, but on the other side of the spectrum where you're now yeah. light-skinned and we are judging and putting you into some box. Yeah, some box of, I have it easy. You understand? And mm. not knowing, being a, a, a light-skinned person, you are targeted sexually mm. more than a dark-skinned person. So it's, I'm not saying dark-skinned women are not targeted. Obviously, every woman in South Africa is in danger. But yes. as a light skin, it's like, yo. Now everybody's like, oh, oh, sexy young. You get like old men coming to you. You get like men coming to you. But, oh, you light skin with upila, yellow bone. You see that insensitive like phrase, yellow bone. How do you feel about that word, yellow bone? That phrase? I'm not yellow. Hey, I kill a yellow bone, you kill a red bone. There's a difference. <laughs> I'm a red bone. I'm not yellow. Red bone. And people should know I'm a red bone and it's going to be that way for Why red until bone? I die. I think like a red bone for me, my friend Lucian, she's, he's like a brother of my friend. Okay. One day he came to me and be like, you are a red bone. And I was like, what are you saying? He's like, you are a red bone. <laughs> I'm like, eh? Aria, you got like Aliyah, Alicia Keys type of bone. I'm like, Aliyah. I like Aliyah. That's like my so, role model. I like, get it. But like, you know, I'm like, yeah, I like look like Aliyah. He's like, no, you don't look like Ali. Yes, you yeah. have Aliyah skin. You understand? And I'm like, give me a term of a red bone. And he's like, it's like when you look at your skin, you're not yellow, yellow. But when you look at your skin and you put it in the light, it has some reddish color complexion. Like, you understand? You have to, like, look deep in it. It has, like, a reddish color, but it's not there. And to see the difference between a yellow bone and a red bone, when it's winter, you turn light. When it's summer, you turn dark. Whereas if you are a, a, a light-skinned person, when it's winter or summer, you are light. So yellow no matter what. Like, the whole year. Throughout the whole year. That's how you see the difference. So I didn't mm. like... So when I come to my uh, township, like now I live at my township. I don't live in Pretoria anymore because of school. Mm. When I walk through my township in the streets, people judge me by my skin color. Oh, she thinks she's better. Oh, she thinks she's this. Oh, can you bow in? And I'm like, how... What do you mean? They haven't spoken to you. They know nothing. They just looked at you. You know, they just assume just because I'm yellow, I think I'm better than everyone. And it's not that. I have a lot of dark skinned friends that I love dearly that I look at them. I'm like, Yazi, I wish I was you. I wish I was dark skinned I, because I feel like I'm not safe as a light skin in South Africa. I feel like there are some things when guys, if I look at my past relationships uh, as a yellow bone and I ask the guy I'm with at the moment, I'm like, what attracted you to me? First thing they mention is my skin color. He has only yellow bone, it's a yellow bone. And now when oh. I think about it, I'm like, how? I thought you would say like how my, my intelligence, smile, your eyes. my personality. First thing is my skin tone. And I'm like, how? If I was dark, what would happen? And they're like, no, you'd be ugly. And that's oh. like the thing that people have. Like, yo, you're just beautiful because you're yellow. If you are dark, you'd be ugly. Hey, say, don't make yourself bit better because you yellow bone. If you are dark, you'll be ugly. And I just don't understand who is dark and ugly. Because I prefer a dark guy. Yo. Have you so seen the dark men? Like hey. <laughs> exactly. So that's the thing that we go through as yellow bones. And the hardest thing that we go through as yellow bones is that people think we're not smart. People yes. think we're not intelligent. Like if I come to someone and be like, I study politics, so I study law. They're like, oh, you're too pretty for that. I'm like, how? What do you mean I'm too pretty to study law so only and politics? So people study law and politics or exactly. what am I supposed to be like, studying now? Exactly. Must I be a model or like be a reality show star? And or They're like, yeah, be a model. How? Why don't you go for modeling? I'm against modeling. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not that type of person. I have the body. 
hello but uh, uh <laughs> you know i have the height i'm really tall but like it's not me so it's it, it's kind of hard as a light skin woman as well to be in a situation where i'm not saying we are trying to make excuses mm. as light skin we just do not it's not that deep as dark skin women dark skin women go through the most yes i know that for a fact they go through the most it's like saying uh some black people will be like ha ah, white people are rich there are white people that are struggling trust me if you go around potestroon in town you're going to see more homeless white people than black people that's a fact yes so for it's i think it's a system that we need to break we need to come together as black people and not against each other because now o orise o orise dark is dark is beautiful mara you see people like bomb shows are bleaching themselves or kanimba bleaching themselves i'm like why would you make yourself look like a corpse you can't do that <laughs> i mean why why do you want to look dead you get what i mean i'm like be black embrace your blackness you are the symbol of bravery you are the symbol of our ancestors when i look at a dark skin woman or a dark skin man i look at our ancestors i look at people who fought for who we are today where we are today i am in university because of you because of you because of you you get what i mean okay, even now, light skin people yeah no, so i've got a question with you saying you see dark people and you see your ancestors what about those where they are light because you know there are some people where someone in the family was is a yellow bone and there's down the line everyone is dark i'm dark my mom's dark and then i happen my sister happens to be the yellow bone of the family because there's a gene somewhere how do you view them now and also tying back with your your organization of she spoke so if someone comes and tells you that i have been in these relationships based on like you said where the first thing the guy says attracted to to them them to you is simply your skin complexion nothing else where to from there how do you obviously we understand it's a mindset but how do we then break that mindset and get them to love them for them okay for me i struggled to accept that i'm black like i said because of my skin color but yeah. just because you light in complexion it doesn't mean you are less black that's not what i'm saying for me i'm saying in my opinion a dark skin person symbolizes bravery for me you understand yes but just because you're light skin it doesn't mean you're not brave there's like koi sans koi sans were yellow bones and they yes. still fought for us as well they are the they also africans that fought for our freedom today that fought for our land and everything else and they were light skin so whether you light whether you colored whether you mixed race the fact that you have some blackness in you makes you black not the color of your skin how dark how light it is just that you are black you like nothing can change you so for someone who will come to me as a yellow bone and be like yo i feel like i'm not black enough mara uwaswanu wazulu wasqoso all of this language yeah. you are black you understand all i can tell them is girl you are black whether you yellow whether you dark i wish there were if you want to feel like you are not black enough i wish there was something that we can take to look more black but at the same time we're still going to be criticized like those who bleach their skin yes they are criticized as well we don't know why they do it there are so many excuses of why they bleach their skin i don't agree with that many people don't agree with that but is their choice I'm very skinny and if I want to look like Kim Kardashian because right now big butts are very attractive. Yes. I would want to go and get my butt done, right? But at the same time you have to sit down and be like am I really going to destroy what my ancestors created? My ancestors 
took the time to create me. So mm-hmm. I have to be proud at what they put in me. I may not have a big butt. I might have a lighter skin or a darker skin, but there's a reason why I, I am like this. You might be the first dark person to break the system. You might be the first light person to break the system. Or you might be the first light person to break people's mindset of, hey, I study law. And be like, ah, light people, light-skinned people, they're very smart. You know, you are who you are because you were made to change the world in a way you can change it. Like, I can look at a, doc- at a doctor and be like, damn, I wish I was good at physics. But there's a reason why you were not good at physics and now you're good at debating and history and whatever. Like, I am. There's a reason why you're good at history and politics because you can change anything you, you put your mind in. Right now is colorism. You can change that. Light-skinned people after today and dark-skinned people can come together and be like, you are my sister. You are my brother. And they will never see the difference. All we see is black. And all we're going to say is, you are black. Not light skin, not dark skin, but you are black. And that's all I'm going to say to them. That you are who you are because you have to be who you are to change the world that it is today. Their mindset, their knowledge, how they speak, how they walk, how they act. That's it. Sure. Yeah, that was a lot, eh? Hey, it was a lot. Yes, I must be in parliament. Sira must call me. So how do you digest that? Tell us more about your organization. Where do you see it being in three, in the next three to five years? Yes, in three years, I see my organization being like power. I like, I, I, I like to emphasize the fact that it should be like power and it should only be managed by black women. Mm. I'm not racist. I'm not saying white women... Uh, I don't want to work with white people, but I like to emphasize on black women because my organization is purple. And I chose the color purple because of the book, Color Purple. Mm -hmm. You know, like the book that they subscribed at high school, um, it was, my book was the color purple. And it talked about this uh, main character who was abused and raped by her father, her stepfather got pregnant and her kids were sent away and she became a slave and she was sold to an older man and that man was cheating her like just an oppression of a woman. And at the end, she beat that oppression and came came back stronger and bigger. You understand? So that's why I, I chose the color purple for my organization. So that black women who have been victimized and went through rape, who went through abuse and these terrible stuff, come back independent, come back stronger than they were before the rape, before the domestic violence. Mm. They must not be defined by the action. That action should push them to be the best they can be. So that's why my organization, it is what it is today, and I want it to be bigger. I want my organization to help victims, to teach young women about these issues that we face. Um to teach men how to help us through this, you understand, yes. through this issue. And I also, I don't want to be that organization that find victims and then leave them. I want to help these victims to be the best they can, create bazaaries for them so they can study whatever they want, wherever they want, and become independent. Like, I want to be there when they hold their degree and be like, I am the first black person yes. to become a medical whatever. I'm the first black woman to become the face of a comments or the face of Donna Claire. You understand? Yes. Or anything. I just the want to. Anything. The first of anything. And just go through that journey with them. When they buy their first house, their first car, when they have their first kid, when they get married to that perfect man. That's what I want my organization, like build a family of black women in South Africa, come together and inspire more black women in the future. And it has to be a generational thing. Like once I feel like I want to retire from this organization, I'm either going to give it to my little sister or give it to my kids 
in the future. So it must go on until, I don't know, the world ends. So self-sustaining is what you're looking yeah. at. Yep. Yeah. Right. So thank you, Siamo. We'll just like to, well, from my, from after speaking with you, is there anything that you would say to a light-skinned girl? or someone who looks like you or doesn't even define herself as light skin or someone that we would see and be like, hey, you're yellow bone. What would be your message to her? Keep fighting. Like my tattoo says, like my tattoo says keep fighting. So I'm going to tell all of the light skin girls to keep fighting. Don't let other people's opinion oppress you. You are smart. You can be anyone you, you want to be. If you want to be the first yellow bone actress to act like a slave, go for it. Mm. I will go to Moja Love and I will fight for you to be the first <laughs> black light skin slave to act. If you like being light skin, it has its disadvantages and it has it, its most advantage, but don't take the disadvantages to hate. You are smart as a light-skinned girl. You are beautiful. Even And you must think of yourself as a dark-skinned girl as well and be like, I am beautiful. And as a light-skinned girl, don't have a big head. One thing light-skinned girls do, and I know plenty of women can agree with me, they have a big head. They think just because they're light-skinned, they, yeah, they, they take over the world. They're superior. No, you're not, honey. End of the day, we are all at the same level we're all working to the same future and at the same same time you are not better than us you just light there's nothing nice about that there's yeah, nothing we are the same. About it's just your complexion we are the same i'm a woman you're a woman we are women exactly just be humble humble yourself and stay in your own lane that's all i can tell light-skinned women and that you are african or yeah, africa girl <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just colored. No, I'm just eh, eh. Umu Africa girl. Ota South Africa. We understand. Rela. Sila. Every yeah, board. Yeah. We are here. Every board. Tiamo, thank you. It has been a pleasure. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we'll let you know. Keep you updated with the questions or any follow up we have. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, we will be joining, we're, well, Nungi will be joining us soon. But Tiamo, thank you so much. Thank you for your wise words. We truly hope that your organization does grow and that she yes. spoke becomes something that, like a household name. Thank yes. You. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Whew. Guys, that was a lot. Yeah. All you light-skinned women, young girls, mothers, even the light-skinned guys, you heard what Tiamo had to say. You are African. You are beautiful. You are smart. Be you. Be what you want to be. You can do whatever you want to do. Don't use the whole complexion thing against you. As you heard, some will think that you have a big head or you're just doing all of this. Be you. Uh, if you have any questions for Tiamo regarding her organization or anything of that sort or any more questions with our topic from today, please feel free to send them through. We will keep continuing with this. Uh, we're just waiting for Nunki to join us in the next couple of minutes. But yeah, it's been, whew, it's been a lot. I've learned personally something as someone who's somewhat in between. I tell people I'm a yellow bone in the sun because when the sun just hits my face, I am, it has that glow. But uh, I'm what you'd consider a dark person or someone in the middle. My most of my family's dark. If you're yellow bone, you're yellow bone. And like Tima said, I also haven't had those experiences of being judged or you walking down the street and saying, you know, you are going to be challenged or anyone saying that you're pretty or they're only with you because of your complexion. I've never had that, of course. But we know that in South Africa, we are all women. We go through different things, different experiences. So we're not going to invalidate your experiences. It's what happened to you. It's not who you are. So we will be with you. Um, you can always contact Tiamo and her organization. She spoke and hear more of what they do and how they could possibly assist you. 
and let's take it from there. Hi, Nungi. Finally, you've joined us. Hey. <laughs> welcome, welcome. How are you? Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> so, Nungi, obviously, we need a background on you. It's just some info. We know that yeah. you are co-founder of Ace Models International, and you have a lot on your plate. Please share with us. Hello, Mzansi. Hello, everybody. So, my name is Nunki. I'm a businesswoman. I run, I co-own a academy called Ace Models International. Um, it's in Soweto. It's a self-development and modeling academy. Apart from that, I've got another business. It's called I Am Nility Trade, where we specialize in event planning, catering, and flower arranging. Um, also, during my day, I work for Ephraim on the chemistry side of things. And I'm a Where single mom as that? well to a beautiful teenager. So, yeah, very busy girl. <laughs> sure. Very busy. Yeah, you look like you have your hands full. Yeah, oh, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have one daughter that I birthed, and I have about approximately about, mm, I'd say about 50 models, 50 children that I adopted. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Your life must be hectic. Must be hectic. Yes, yes. So, Rinki, obviously, we've started and with our conversation for today, you've heard what Tiama had to say about being a light-skinned woman in South Africa. And with yeah. your modeling agency, what have you come across? The children that you've adopted, what have yeah. they shared with you with them being light-skinned or the relationship they've had with their complexions, especially in your industry? Yeah. Um, I want to start off by saying that I, I have a lot of respect and a different perspective now with um, light-skinned women. I, when we started this and I was watching the chats, the, um, the comments being made from coming from lighter-skinned women, I was actually quite shocked to hear that they also had challenges the same way as myself being a dark-complexioned woman that I had the challenges. And I have absolute respect for you guys because I confess I was one of the dark-skinned women who thought Light-skinned women have it easy in this world. They have it easy. And to hear the comments and to hear what Tiama is saying is actually quite shocking. It goes to show that we cannot be judging a skin, you know, judging a book by its cover and assume that, oh, you're a light skin, you'll get the job, you'll get the guy, you'll get the promotion, you'll get this. And, you know, everything is just given to you because you're a light skin, where us darker skin, we need to be working harder. We need to be something. We need to be other wealthy. We need to know the right people in order to be considered, you know? Yeah. Um, just to touch, touch back on my history as a dark skin woman, uh, growing up, I was bullied terribly, absolutely terribly. First of all, I was skinny, and then I was dark complexion, and I was just this, this little twiggy girl with pigtails and dark skin, and growing up in, my mother was a domestic worker, obviously, so uh, as people call it, you know, and I was taken care of like, like a typical white child, because everything of mine was neat. You know, my mother learned from having to take care of uh, the people she worked with. So my hair was neat and everything. I, I attended a, a black school primary because I, I, I couldn't speak black languages when I was growing up because I, I grew up very closely with the people that my mother worked for. Yes. So they constantly spoke English to me. So I had to go to a black primary to learn how to speak my black languages. And I learned uh, even though I struggled a lot, but I learned, I got there. And because of that, I was bullied on top of that. And the teachers also instigated the bullying, by the way. So I grew up hating black people. Right now, I have 80% friends who are white. I grew up hating black people because I was bullied by my own people. I was manhandled by my own people. I didn't like black people at all because I thought 
they're not nice people. The only people I tolerated that were black were my family. Strangers, I didn't want to be around black people because I thought they're going to tease me for being dark skinned. They're going to tease me for being skinny. So I didn't want to be around black people at all. And then being in primary school, lacking confidence and everything like that, I ended up entering a pageant. When I entered a pageant, to my surprise, I took the crown. And taking the crown, the yellow bones were my princesses. And here's the skinny, dark skin, Mnyamani, like hardcore Mnyamani. <laughs> Like Mnyamani, and she takes the crown, and then I've got this beautiful yellow bones who are in high school. They're my princesses, and from then on, I was like, you know what? There's something special about me. I continued entering, entering, and entering, and I was winning. Then for high school, I went to a multiracial school. I got there also being bullied by my own kind, and entered the pageant, and I won, and I beat Abelou. I beat them all, and I took the crown. Fine, fast forward years go by, and then I got into relationships with Abelungu. I got married to a white man. I have a child by a white man. My child is a mixed race. And not to hate on colors, nothing against colors or anything like that. My daughter does not want to be called a colored, simply because she says, my mother is black, my father is white. That makes me mixed race. I do not want to call myself colored because who am I discriminating between my parents? My father is white, my mother is black, so I'm a mixed race. So she wants to be called a mixed race. Yeah. Then the bleaching thing started. The bleaching thing started, and I read articles how young girls were committing suicide because they were dark skinned, they were regarded as ugly. Some girls, they're now scar-faced because of the products that they had to use so that they can be yellow bones. So the scene and I was like, no, man. And now hearing about it in the media of how hard it is in our day now that yeah. people are now putting shoe polish. They are now mixing, scrubbing with lemon on their faces. Oh, my goodness. Oh, goodness. And then Ace came, came into life. And then I started, we started with the Ace and Dube. And we had models there who lacked confidence, absolutely lacked confidence in themselves, especially the dark skinned. And then I took them one side and I had a conversation, a personal conversation with them. And I told them my history. I told them about myself. And they couldn't believe it where I was now from where I come from. Yes. And I said, you need to, and I said, take, take a celebrity that you look up to. You are seeing the now, but you don't see where they come from, what the steps that they took to get here. And I said to them, do a research on that person. And then you take steps in seeing what they had done to their lives, what they went through to get to where they are. And I said with me, yeah, and I said with me, it took a long time for me to accept myself. It took a very long time. Even in my adult years, I'm still bullied. I'm half Shangani, half uh, uh, Swazi. The minute I say I'm Zonga, people don't believe me. They say, no, you're not Zonga. First of all, you, you speak like a white person. And you don't dress like a Shangani. And I'm like, how does a Shangani dress? Yeah, my shangani, they like bright colors and stuff like that. And the accent is what, what? I'm like, I'm half Swazi and half shangani. And like, oh, yeah. And they go, oh, now, now, now I see the features. Oh, now, and I'm now like, see what... now, now they see the features. But before, they didn't see the features. So I'm like, you, you, you end up accepting yourself. The minute you, it's all about accepting yourself. It's all about removing this, this layer that's around you and this layer that's around you it's the peer pressure that comes from people the stigmatization that comes from people that label you as a dark skin as a yellow bone the minute you remove that and say mina amnunki koza trust me that's the power you take over and that's the power you have within and the confidence just takes over and i tell my models that 
me now when I walk into the room, I take precedence. I take I take charge. People turn around and look. I have a presence. Yes, they understand and know that I'm in a room because I tell myself, dark skin or not, so when I walk, I don't walk as a dark skin, I walk as a woman. I walk in acceptance of who I am. I walk as an African woman. Dark skin or yellow skin makes no difference. I walk as an African woman. I don't say I walk as a Swazi woman. I walk as a Tsonga woman. No, I walk as an African woman. That's why when I walk into a room, they feel it. My presence is there. And you forget that, oh, no, you don't see that. You turn around and you go, hmm, that woman has confidence. And that's who I am. Yeah. Sure. And that's exactly what I teach my models. So you can tell us how would you obviously because you're saying that your daughter doesn't want to be classified even or even be called as a colored she wants to be identified or she wants us to recognize that she's mixed race yeah how do you then overcome the challenge that some of your models will be going through or what you've gone through if someone sees you and then they'll be like oh you're so pretty or to be for a dark skinned person or they're gonna call you like a dark dindy or whatever names we've come up with over the years how yeah. do you then overcome like the mindset that even Tiamo spoke about of the mindset society has put into us? How do you then mm. have that mindset shift to say, it's not about what I look like and getting to that acceptance of who you are as the African woman that you are. And that's it. The only way to overcome it is to realize that other people's opinion is a low self-esteem of themselves. When somebody disses me for being Omnyaman, I look at them and I go, do you ever look at yourself in the mirror and go, you are beautiful? Because if you're identifying something ugly about me, there's something ugly within yourself that you are projecting onto me. So I've, I've, I've come to tell myself, when somebody tells me, I know that, I, I, I know that. But the fact that you are highlighting that to me when I know means there's something wrong now. Sure. Simple as that. I'm aware that I'm a dark skin. There's no need for you to remind me and tell me. But for you to have the time and the inclination to tell me that tells me you have issues with yourself that you must tell me that I'm dark skinned. And you must tell me in such a derogatory way even. Sure. Yeah, that's so. Whew, I don't even know where to begin now. <laughs> I'm not judging myself for the times I've looked at someone and I was like, hmm, that girl's pretty. Like, she's really pretty for a yellow bone, or she's really pretty for dark skin, or she's got like such even toned skin. Yeah. Or, you get that a lot. You, you get that a lot. So I am um, one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I am one of them. I have the white people. I have white people saying you 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 are too black to be speaking English like that. And I'm like, what what do you mean I'm too black to be speaking English like a white person? Like, no, um no, I just mean that, you know, um black people have funny accents. I'm like, what do you mean? What what do you mean I'm too black? Um can a black person not speak English? with an uh, English accent or white person's accent? Is it wrong? Is it a sin? No, 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 it's not a sin. I'm just saying that you're too black. And I'm like, I don't understand the part of you are too black. Am I supposed to be light black? Or am I supposed to be in between black for me to be accepted, to be able to speak English? Elaborate. What do you mean I'm too black? You know, so... Um, yeah, there has been people that will say, "Hi, man, oh, and I'm like, I'm a Shangani, Anjan, Anjan, I'm a Shangani. <laughs> Define my two sisters, uh, my in between sisters, number two and number three, they light skinned, like they are yellow bones, and they are Shanganis. <laughs> and then, first born and myself, we're the dark skinned one. My dad is darker, my mom is a bit of a light skin, my dad is dark. So I guess we took my dad's side of genes and then the two took my mom's side of, side of the gene. But Jay, it, it's, 
you do get people who go, you are too pretty to be black. You are too pretty to be this and this and this and that. And a person needs to develop a thick skin and realize in Jehuti, you know what? There will always be those comments. Whether umlani, growing up in your adult, there will always be that comment. It's all about what you believe about yourself. What do you think about yourself? Do you think you are too dark? Do you think you're too ugly to be this and that? Do you believe, Uguti, you're not good enough to be a Zonga woman or you've got more Swazi features? What do you believe about yourself? It starts with yourself, no one else, with yourself internally and the mindset. Okay. So now on that note of people identifying who they are and defining themselves and internalizing who they believe and their beliefs, how has that influenced your your modeling agency and the models you have and obviously the pressures that women would face in the modeling industry because yeah. obviously we've all heard that to be a model or oh, well, this is what we grew up with you had to yeah. be tall you had to be skinny you had to be a yellow bone you had to have relaxed hair like you had to yeah. be that girl yeah yeah so years ago i was in the semi-finalist for the miss essay this is back in 2000 or 1999 I didn't make it because I was short and I was quite upset. I was, I was, I was gutted and I wrote, I wrote off pageantry, entering competition and modeling. I just, I just said, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I'm completely done, done, done. And then with ACE, we don't discriminate. That's why we call it an academy. We want everyone and every girl, every size, every shape. And we say to you, if you are short, you've got another skill that can be regarded as modeling. You can be a photographic model. You can be a print model. So we shape and mold you to becoming that model. Modeling these days has become broad. They're not just looking at skinny and certain features or whatever the case may be. It's now become broad. Now they're even taking girls with tattoos. There's a market for girls with tattoos on their body. There's a market for shorter girls for certain campaigns. There's market for dark skinned girls for certain com uh, campaigns. So with ACE models, we don't discriminate. We want everybody because then we train you and prepare you for that world, that vicious world of modeling and photographic and so forth. And when we get those girls, because I get a lot of inquiry, I even got a one recently now saying, I've always wanted to be a model, but I'm fat and I'm short. Yes. So I responded and I said, um, when you say you're fat, what do you mean? Are you, are you, what size are you? Um, send me a picture. Cause sometimes you look at a skinny girl, you look at yourself and then you say you fat. And do you not fat? You're just looking at a very skinny person. You're standing next to a very skinny person and you're judging yourself less and saying you are fat when actually you are not fat. You're just standing next to a pole. And you feel like you are <laughs> rotund. That's the actual truth. I get that a lot. I get that a lot. Some girls come in to meet me and they say, but I'm fat. And I look at her and I'm like, where is the fat, honey? You are a size 34. You're not fat. Like that and she size. walks in. Yes, she walks in with a size with a size 30 or something. And then she says, and I she's skinny. And I'm like, sweetie, let me tell you something. I was once upon a time skinny and I was very unhealthy. I was mm -hmm. sick. And the doctor said, you need to eat a full chicken, babes. You need to eat a full chicken so you can develop some fat. And otherwise you are going six feet underground. And I'm like, because you are skinny, it doesn't mean you, you are healthy. That doesn't look healthy. So I advise them and tell them, we do, we are very honest with them. When they're overweight, we say, sweetie, you need to do something with your weight, exercise, eat right. We also teach them with nutrition. Like last week, we had a session on nutrition and fitness and all. And um, we teach them things that they normally don't learn at school. But with our academy, we don't discriminate at all. And if you're overweight, there's plus size models. There's no problem. There's a market for plus size mar yes. uh, uh, um, market. So we train you. We 
uh, prepare you for that world and we give you the confidence to accept yourself that you're a plus size and love yourself for being a plus size. Now, let me ask you, because someone like my size, I would consider myself average. I'm a size 32, 34, depending, you know, depending. And then obviously you'd have where you'd want to be a model or now you're like, mm, I'm too short or mm, I feel like I'm not skinny enough for that or I would like to try plus size or what defines plus size? Because you'll look at the models, look at you, I'll be like, most of the models I see, they'll say she's a size 30. I'm like, the last time I was a size 30, I was in high school. And even then, when you look yeah. at your pictures, you're like, oh, I was so skinny. So how do you yeah. get your models or the people you're with to develop that self-confidence or for you to do that analysis of saying you should be in the plus size, but then lose the weight, be healthy. Don't just assume that, okay, because you're big, you're naturally falling to plus size when you're just unhealthy. How do you, because there's a fine line. When do you yeah, know when to draw the line? Yeah, that's very true. What we do, we bring in professionals. We bring in prof uh, um, plus size models, the professional plus size models. We bring in nutritionists. We bring in fitness trainers to come in. And they obviously will be able to identify if this person is overweight and needs a private session in terms of us counseling them and so forth. So we don't just walk in because we're not obviously nutritionists, professional nutritionists. We can't just walk in and, or maybe a model walks in and she's overweight and we go, oh no, you're overweight. No, we take you in, but we bring in the professional people who are in that field and we say, listen, take a look at certain models and tell us if you believe that they are over the plus size are they overweight is their weight regarded as overweight and they need to do something um is this a proper plus size or what we get guidance from them we don't just decide oh no when are you too fat when are you too skinny or anything like that but obviously even us we we have experience in knowing when a person is too skinny or overweight but at the same time we still seek a second opinion without draw without having to have our own um opinion given upon to, to to our models and then when we get that professional opinion back we set the models down and we say listen you've got potential on one two three but you need to work on certain things we had a model that was way way too skinny um we had scouting agencies coming through and they scouted her and they said, but she needs to gain a little bit of weight. She's way too skinny, but she was perfect with everything. She just had a little bit of uh, um, uh, a weight issue. And then we took her to nutritionists. They prepared a diet here for her and said, follow this diet. In no time, you'll gain a two to three Ks and then you'll be fine. So we do seek professional assistance from professional people who are trained to give those kind of opinions and professional um, statements. Now on the controversial subject of bleaching, what's your view yeah. and what's your take on it? Yeah, bleaching, my friend. <laughs> hey. hey. We heard Samo, she said she's completely <laughs> against it. She doesn't understand also, why people it. do it. Hey. Wow. Oh. Look, from when it started, and people like Obo Kanyimbao and the Mshosas, when they came out and they, they were asked this question, and I think I speak under correction, Kanyimbao said it was because she was not regarded as beautiful in the market. So for her to have, to, to get what she wanted, she needed to be a certain look, and mm -hmm. she decided she was going to go that route. It's unfortunate that that's what a lot of women go through and it, they go through that on a personal capacity as well me now when i was bullied in school this guy told his his girlfriend that was my best friend she was light-skinned and he said she's too ugly for you you are light-skinned yeah now she's dark skin she's making you ugly and the friend liked me and his friend liked me and he said you can't date a girl that's dark skin she's ugly so he ended up not asking me out because I was dark skin. 
and I see that happening now where guys are go I mean I'm kind of my yellow bone and like about a yellow bone and yellow bone this 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 and I'm just going I want to know I want to buy alpha because of this they are bleaching themselves they are damaging their skin they ending up far worse than what they were before so society has put so much pressure on young girls to say you i mean even music videos these days you can hardly find a dark skin girl in music videos and that is so so sad you find light skin girls with like the slay queens with all this fancy hair and all of that yeah. they are light skin girls exactly you know they are light skin girls how are my dark skin girls supposed to feel how are they supposed to compete with that when the videos and the adverts is just light skin girls so society and the world itself needs to change you need to accommodate dark skin girls and say you guys are also just as beautiful as light skin girls and then they'll start accepting themselves but right now i can honestly say that this bleaching and what the advertisement is doing the society is doing is just killing the minority of dark skin girls because all we see on tv is light skin girls and that is the absolute truth i'm so absolutely what, against what would be your words of wisdom or the imparting or the last statement or something you'd want to leave imprinted in our dark skin girls dark skin girls there's nothing you can do about who you are you first of all you didn't ask to be born and you didn't ask to be a dark skin you are what you are because you were chosen to be one accept yourself there is a world out there that's accepting of you and like i said mena it's confidence i tell myself i'm not i'm not a dark skin woman i'm aware that i am a dark skin woman but first and foremost i'm human i'm a woman i'm just like any other woman that's walking around i am a woman and i'm human and i'm allowed i have the right to be on earth just like anyone else that's on earth there's a reason why i'm a dark skin and i love it and i've appreciate it and i have accepted it when you take care of yourself you learn to accept yourself you learn to love yourself you learn to have confidence so take care of yourself in taking care of yourself i'm not just referring to your outer taking take care of your soul take care of your spirit take care of what you are listening to take care of what you are seeing and just take care of yourself take care of your spirit and take control of your life you are dark skin for a reason there's nothing you can, you can bleach yourself all you want but over the years that bleaching starts doing something to you there's nothing you can do umya mani shala umya mani appreciate yourself there is a world out there that is accepting of you love 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 yourself trust me when you start doing that the confidence is so lethal it's sickening it is sickening when you start having the con- it is sickening yeah dina it's like you walk in once oh no <laughs> that you just simply walk around like your god's gift god's gift it, 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 exactly it and honestly speaking not to be arrogant or anything that's how i am even at work they say they call me they call me a, a model they call me madam at work because when mm-hmm. i walk i walk with confidence yes i i i walk with my head ngithi mbonene umnyamana ufikile yes umnyamana ufikile she has arrived take note take note i earn my complexion i have accepted it and i live it and i love it and that's all that matters to me sure lunki that that was great thank you for thank the you. wisdom thank you for the advice thank you for sharing your views on the other side of the spectrum of being the dark skinned or the dark dindies that we've had thank you for taking thank the time so with us and thank you for the call yeah thank you thank you so much thank you to tiamo as well we've seen both thank you tiamo 
<laughs> she's here being like a cheerleader here being a cheerleader yes <laughs> yes so as we've all heard thank you everyone for joining us uh we've heard the views of being a dark and light skinned and bottom line is accept who you are whether you're light you're dark you're in between love yourself accept yourself as you are you were brought onto this planet for a reason mzanzi yeah. chipidias cheering out <laughs>